He is the commissioner of the SEC. Greg Sankey joins us on the program. How many games did you go to in the last week? Four. And uh, week zero, I was at Vandy, so I'm five games into my season already. Do you tailgate? No. <laughs> I've... Uh, it's a bit of a hazard for me walking through tailgates. Most, you know, people when when they're together are actually really nice in person. Uh, on social media, maybe not quite. <laughs> well, you know, commissioners always get booed. Do you get Do you get booed? Oh, it's happened a couple of times. I I was um, I was at the the LSU national championship celebration and smattering, but you know, most people are really <laughs> kind. And I reminded them it was the first year that. The conference had approved beer sales in Tiger Stadium, which <laughs> resulted in a great, great positive roar. So you just got to know how to play the game if you're me. How would you recap the summer for college football? Oh, wow. Um, I, I will say this year, you know, July 4th weekend was quiet, which is unlike the last five years. So we had the chance to celebrate celebrate July 4th without the cell, the cell phone in, in hand. Uh, but certainly a time of change. I think the the pressures that are there. I saw I saw Jack last week. Um, I expressed my disappointment. I was not on set in Dublin with you and Will Farrell, but we'll do it by Zoom. And you know, the, it, he expressed a, a perspective. Um, I probably wouldn't describe it quite with those same terms, but it's a time of change, a time of pressure, um, a time that that has a, a level of discomfort across college football, and really, I think, all of college sports. Uh, in case people, what uh, the commissioner is referring to, Jack Swarbrick, the athletic director at Notre Dame, had this to say two weeks ago in Ireland. Can you sum up what's happened with college football in the last, where would you start? Complete disaster. How did, it, how did we get here, Jack? I wish I knew. And, and listen, I'm not, uh, every, everybody in the industry has to take responsibility here. I'm not... Uh, excluding myself from that. I think uh, the decision-making has lost its way in terms of the focus on the student-athlete and what's primarily best for them. Um, but we are where we are, and we have to try and make it work. I mean, we've been pretty uh, vocal in the past month about we need to find a home for Stanford and Cal, that you can't have two of the great academic institutions in the world not have a, not have a place to play. How do you think Jack got to this uh, bottom line there. Well, I, I thought his his follow on comment was really important. The observations about uh, shared responsibility, about decision making. Uh, we all look at reality from our perspectives. And the Southeastern Conference has made decisions over the last few years. The addition of uh, Oklahoma and Texas, for example, that actually did contemplate the student athlete experience, our ability to add 95 miles to our geography, but elevate our competitive experience, bring in national champions and, and, and uh, challenge ourselves. Uh, but, you know, we, we've historically been slow to adapt in college athletics. That's not new. That's not like this decade or this generation's issue. Uh, we now have a set of external pressures that I think uh, are part of Jack's observation that create the discomfort. So we have state legislatures making laws and dictating how we will run athletic programs. We have interest from Congress. I'm not, I'm not clear that there's a commitment to help restore a national standard. We have change in the NCAA. I've appreciated Charlie Baker, but we're still dealing with a bureaucracy that is slow to adapt to modern realities. And at the same time, on our campuses and in our conference office, we have to adapt to those modern realities um, every day. So, uh, Dan, I think that's a combination of frustration you heard, but also uh, the change that's inherent in our society right now. What concerns you more, name, image, and likeness, or the transfer portal? I, I would say the, the, the ecosystem, if you will, or the environment that's developed around name, image, and likeness, Going back to 2018, 2019, uh, that label would have been envisioned um, in a certain way. And we have uh, any number of student athletes. You think about Bryce Young and Dr. Pepper ads and Olivia Dunn and Viore commercials. I mean, that's what that's what it was. We had football linemen telling us about a car wash deal that they have for all their pickup trucks. And that's normal activity. What's, what's happened is it's become a recruiting inducement. Um, it's allowed outside influences, boosters, if you will, and now collectives that we've held off 
from being involved in recruiting, they've entered this realm. And, and I think bottom line, what that means is one, we've shifted control of our athletics programs away from campus leaders who do have an accountability structure. We also have created questions of, hey, when I'm student athlete from team A lining up against a competitor from team B, are we actually playing by the same rules? And that's where we have to have the restoration of a national center. That's happened around this name, image, and likeness space. And it's developed in a way that's not exactly what would have been envisioned as I described four or five years ago. What's the craziest amount of money you've heard that a player is getting? Well, I read the media accounts and, and I actually don't believe what I read. So you've seen multiple, multiple millions. Um, I, I, I question whether that's true because people involved in, in this NIL space, third parties, agents, NIL reps are incentivized to inflate the number. And you asked about NIL or transfer portal, so I had to pick one. But what we have is a layering of the issue. So more transfer freedom, which that's our reality. Um, but it's been layered with the ability to now go out and, and inflate numbers. And so I think there has to be care in, in believing the numbers that one sees publicly. He's the commissioner of the SEC, Greg Sankey. Um, finish this sentence. If the SEC didn't bring in Oklahoma and Texas... Would have been a lot more pressure on me the last few weeks, um, a lot more questions. And uh, from my perspective, our decision in 21 um, has been shown to have been a really wise decision. And uh, one of the cool things just from the time we're talking is Texas will be playing Alabama uh, this Saturday, which is, a, 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 I think, a, a sign or an indication into our future and the excitement around these competitions in a 16-team SEC. But – this sort of started the game of musical chairs, didn't it? Texas, Oklahoma? Well, I think you have to go back to uh, expansion in the early 2000s, Dan. I mean, that's reality. So the Big East, uh, losing three members initially to the ACC and then a member to the Big Ten, three more members to the ACC at Dissolve. Uh, that seemed to be a time very different than, than what we had experienced before when, for instance, Arkansas and South Carolina joined or Penn, joined the SEC or Penn State joined the Big Ten. You then had the Pac-10 at the time trying to grow to the Pac-16. That created change a year later. We went from 12 to 14. So I don't think you can go back to just the summer of 21. Mm -hmm. um, the summer of 21 was different. But one of the questions my presidents asked me as we were considering the growth is, um, what does the Big 12 do? So the Big 12 had opportunities to add members. It went is the Big 12 from 10 to, to 14 and then to 12 when Oklahoma moves. Um, what happened this summer is, is different. So the the decisions to go in a very different geographic direction, some of that happened in 22. I, I'd submit when you look over time, those are a little bit different. But if people want to point the finger at our expansion, I'll take that responsibility. I, I will just note, and I think you and I have probably discussed it, uh, way back in 2015, I offered some perspectives to our president. That was my first meeting as commissioner, that change was coming around the 22, 23, 24 cycle when these media agreements um, were renegotiated, and that was pretty prophetic. Yeah, I just wonder, couldn't we keep the football, couldn't we keep the Pac-12 playing football against the Pac-12? Why, why do we have to bring all the other sports to these other conferences. I, I'm trying to understand the, the geography so you don't have to disrupt the Pac-12. Um, I've, I've um, been asked that question a couple of times. My response is usually I'm the least qualified one to answer since when we expanded, we added about 95 miles to our geography. Yeah. Um, I, I think it could have remained. Um, decisions made by campus decision makers and conference decision makers. I think there were public observations dating back to the summer of 22 about potential movement. You have different people in commissioner roles. You have different perspectives uh, on traditions or traditional alignments. Um, that's what seems to have provided these opportunities are these opportunities for change. Um, I think the PAC-12 could have resided. And, and, and Dan, embedded in the question is, a bit of the observation we've seen of just let football operate on its own. And, and I've said, and I'll say to you, we operate athletic departments. Football, uh, at least at this point, is not divorced from everything else we do. It may be it may be different. The stadiums are bigger than the arenas. 
Uh, but for us, we view um, a connectedness, that there are relationships with our athletics departments that are healthy. And you know what? In the Southeastern Conference, uh, we've got huge football games. We have huge baseball games relative to the rest of the world. Uh, I think those reflect on each other and build the intensity, the rivalries, and the interests, just like basketball and, and volleyball and softball do. And I, I don't want us to sacrifice that for what becomes a short-term solution. Lastly, on this break football out idea, I don't know how you'd ever tell a football player. In, you know, Last year, we had the first-round draft pick in the NFL draft. First round in Major League Baseball, the first collegian picked in the NBA draft and the first draft pick in the WNBA. I don't know how you say to the football player, we can do A, B, and C for you, but to the basketball player, men and women, and the baseball player, even though you're going to be a draft pick who's going to make a bunch of money, we can't do these things because you know we're stuck in this other organization. College football needs a boss, right? Well, that's one way to ask the question. Um, do we all if, go back to the summer of 20? If we had all said somebody else is going to make the decision for the Southeastern Conference about whether we play in the fall of 20, I, I don't see that working terribly well. So it's a it's a it's a simple observation with a set of complexities. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But I, I think, look, I'm a traditionalist. Um like I, I, I want these rivalries. I, 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 I want to make sure that we have some kind of fiscal sanity here, not just everybody's got to go and get, get their money. That, that's what concerns me. We, you know, nobody's concerned about that, that these schools are leaving, getting more money, but then the kids want to go and get more money, and then we have a bigger problem with that, it feels like, than we do, hey, game of musical chairs, let's sit down before there's no chairs left. Yeah. Well, and, and I'll go back to some of the comments. So, um we, we we aren't always consistent in our messaging, right? So I, I had coaches who said, wow, you know, people just move. Well, they have to wait. So Oklahoma and Texas, we announced in 21, they had to wait three years. You know, there's no student athlete in the transfer portal who waits three years. Yeah. You know, we, we complain about three months now. So from a philosophic consistency, I think some of these quick sound bites aren't accurate to reality for us i'm going to go back to the conversations i had with the president at oklahoma and the president at texas it was we've watched how your conference has functioned we've watched how it's made decisions we've watched how you led we want to be a part of that i actually think to your point if you put the money in front of every other element of decision making you don't make good decisions in life whether that's personally or professionally yeah. and so for us we looked at the right affiliations the right geography the ability to restore rivalries. You think about Texas and Texas A&M playing again. Um, Oklahoma, Missouri were part of the Big Eight. Texas and Arkansas is a legendary game. We do disrupt some things, but we actually restore more. That's actually a unique conference expansion template relative to what's happening around us. Yeah, I got less problem with the SEC than I do some of these, you know, other conferences that, you know, I, I, no need to mention names here. No, I'll take that as a compliment. You get a win, you get a win in this world. Uh, you don't want me to call Jack Swarbrick and uh, get his comments on the SEC. Well, I don't even know what he thinks. Do you get along with all these commissioners the, uh, with the other conferences? Anybody not like you? Um, there, there have probably been moments. If you go back to uh, the summer of 21, there wasn't a lot of warmth in the room. So that was <laughs> when we announced the invitations to Oklahoma and Texas. Uh I think there's been a thawing. I, I'm I'm now like the good guy, right? Because I'm not out there <laughs> recruiting, talking to. Uh, Jack and I get along great. I actually, uh, I value Jack's perspective. And even, well, we might disagree on elements of terminology. Uh, I, I think being as direct as Jack can be is is really beneficial. So, yeah, we, we have views. We have differences. Um, we do have a responsibility to collaborate. Dan, I think that, that, <laughs> actually informs your question about do we need somebody to lead there there has to be the ability for some of us to give and some of us to take and those roles to be reversed over time and uh i think we've made a contribution in a potential expansion of the expansion of the college football playoff um when it started we didn't want to have that everybody else in the room had needs um and yet we compromised and, and i would hope that we can continue to collaborate even through all of these changes you and jack ever talk about notre dame joining the sec 
No, I, I think he's got a, a healthy affiliation. You know, we, we talk about the future. Uh, Do you but, like how I threw that in at the end? Just yeah, I did. I, did. I, did. Um, <laughs> I went up to when Georgia played yeah. just to, to see a football game. I was at Notre Dame's game in Georgia. Uh, but I respect the, the history that, that Notre Dame has. In fact, Dan, I'm asked, even in my own conference meetings, you know, why Notre Dame has their role in the CFP, for example. And I said, you know what, I think that's really healthy for college football. You, you yourself talked about traditions. And uh, even though we're in a time of change and we've been a part of that change, we, we can still honor a number of traditions. And so Jack and I have had that conversation, certainly. Good to talk to you. Hope you have a, great, you, hope you have a great day. I don't know. What, what is the rest of the day? Give us an, for, ex, uh, for example, for instance. Yeah, I'll, I have, there's a video conference with the NCAA president uh, next. Uh, we have our track and field coaches who produce Olympians and national champions uh, in for a meeting. I'm preparing for a baseball coaches meeting where we've won the last four national championships and so never miss an opportunity at the hype. Our presidents and chancellors have a video conference today as we, we look at some of the difficult issues present in college athletics. Um, I, there are two more things on my agenda, a couple of calls with ADs, checked in with my officiating coordinator. We just finished a staff <laughs> meeting, um, phone call, first phone call this morning was 7.30. So the days move along. It's all downhill after this interview. You know that. Yeah, it is. I just want to be on the Dublin invite. Okay, night. next year, Florida State is going to be playing Georgia Tech. Yeah, I probably don't need to be in that one. That would, <laughs> that would, that would create too much internet. <laughs> if all of a sudden, Florida State rumors uh, start to percolate, and then you're over there in Dublin, but uh, there's an open invitation. Okay, well, that that's a good uh, reverse there on me. You got me. Thank you, Jack. I, I, I'm sorry, Craig. I'm still on Jack yeah. Swarbrick. Yeah. No, I, I like the my good Jack. my good buddy from uh, Dublin, Jack Swarbrick. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Greg. We appreciate your time as always. Absolutely. Good to see you. That's the commissioner of the SEC.